and Lewis. And we are recording, so that everyone knows. Um, again, my name is Ann Lewis, and I'm one of the executive officers of the League of Women Voters of Pullman, and welcome. I'm going to go ahead and read our nonpartisan statement. The League acts in support of or in opposition to selected governmental issues which its members have studied. It does not support or oppose candidates, factions, or political parties. League members as individuals are urged to work in the political party of their choice. To protect the League's nonpartisanship policy, guidelines regarding the political activities of the Board of Directors are reviewed frequently. The League of Women Voters is fully committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion in principle and practice. These concepts are central to our current and future success in engaging all individuals, households, communities, and policymakers in creating a more perfect democracy. We acknowledge and honor the first people of the Palouse region and their descendants, including our neighbors of Nez Perce, Colville, and Coeur d'Alene tribes. Again, um, I want to welcome our candidates, and I'm going to turn it over to Deb Olson. Thank you. Welcome back. My name is Deborah Olson, and I will be the moderator tonight. Thank you all for coming out. And it's nice to be in the same room with other people again. It's just not the same over Zoom. I'm sorry. It is. This is also on Zoom, and it's recorded, and our, the recording will be available after the meeting. Go to our website, lwvholman.org, for the link to the website for the recording. Since it's been a while, let's review how things are done. We ask that you write your questions on the cards on your seats. You're all already doing this, so good. You can ask as many questions and get as many cards as you want. Um, so, I'm not going to say this next part because we've already started writing. Uh, when done, raise the card and it will be collected and go to the sorting table where people will go through these the, your questions. And if there's five or six questions regarding the same thing with just different language, they'll try and combine them so that we don't hear the same question over and over. Okay. Questions will also be submitted via chat. We'll get to as many questions as we want tonight, whether we want to stop at 8.30 or drag it out at 9. We'll see how our things are going. For courtesy's sake, please turn off your cell phones or silence them. And re please refrain from clapping, booing, etc. So, Let's begin. Each candidate will have three minutes for opening remarks. Oh, this is the county commission race, of course. And the candidates are Michael Largent, the current incumbent, and John Mark Mandy. So, what? Raise hands. Oh, I, I, yes, raise the hands with the finished questions in them. So, um, Michael, would you like to start? Deb, do you want to remind them of the time? Oh, I said it three minutes. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't I don't know if mine will take or turn on. <laughs> test, test, there we go. So uh, fundamentally, I'm a farm boy from Whitman County while born in Walla Walla. My dad was at a brief stint with a ag job. I was raised on the farm where I spent, at least in my view, every waking moment I wasn't in school doing something on the farm, whether it was haying or harvesting or what have you. But that really is my background. Uh, being raised in a rural community with a, a lovely family and two sibling sisters. Uh, went to Colfax High School and did track and, and those kind of things that you do in high school. Uh, after I graduated from Washington State University, after a brief stint in LA, I am running a track team. And I finished my degree at Washington State University with a BA in finance and accounting. Uh, which I have found later has been very valuable in, in my tenure as county commissioner, um, at which point I graduated and was a corporate accountant down in Houston, Texas for a bit, utilizing my degree 
came back, uh, worked at Washington State University in the Ag Econ Department, uh, teaching adult ed and financial statement analysis. One of the funnest jobs I've ever had is working for Washington State University. And frankly, I went back to farming. So most of my career uh, after the soft money at WSU, I spent farming with you know, some brief um, pauses. Even though I was farming, I, I worked as a legislative assistant to Senator Larry Sheehan for a couple of sessions. Another very interesting and engaging job, which kind of got me interested in public policy. So I've done that, uh, farm boy, volunteer fireman. I go to the Negro Bible Church, uh, involved in my community in 4-H. I still have a kid at home, my lovely bride Audrey is out there, wave Audrey, and five <laughs> grandchildren. So we are quite busy. So um, question will come, why are you running? And frankly, that was a good question. I think John Mark might have asked the same question. Uh, twice. twice, yeah. <laughs> and that's, that is a good question. Uh, at this point in time, um, I announced back in April that I wasn't going to run. And I think it's a good form to tell people in advance, to give candidates a chance to, to line up. When I ran in 2006, there were six candidates and a very competitive race. Uh, when Filing Week shows up, and we, I had been talking to some people about their running, um, we did have, not have near the interest that I would have expected during Filing Week. And to be quite frankly, I received call after call after call after call, not only from our department heads and electeds here at Whitman County, but also across the state who I've worked with in my tenure. So um, I'm nothing particularly special. Uh, I think a lot of people can do this job. Uh, I talked to my wife who said, well, as long as you don't get elected to everything again, uh, well, that would be good. But I I'm proud to do it. But I do want to mention one thing before my time is up, is I have really come to appreciate John Mark. Uh, he's a good uh, campaigner. He's a good competitor. He's friendly. He's honest. And his heart is in the right place. And so getting to know him and his lovely bride, Denise, has just been, these last two election cycles has been an honor for me. So your time, so. <laughs> Thank Matt you, uh, John Mark. Well, before I begin, before the time begins, I'd like to thank the uh, League of Women Voters, and I'd like to thank the Women County Library for uh, hosting this event. Uh, you guys are both great. My grandmother worked with the library many years ago and in the sale. And so I have always been a fan of the library. And of course, what the league stands for, that means a lot to my wife, especially, so, as well as myself. So I'm uh, very, very grateful that you invited us to be here. Um, my name is John Marmanti. And uh, forgive me, I, I kept some notes because I forget who I am sometimes. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I'm a fifth generation resident of Whitman County. My family homesteaded in the Oaksdale area back in 1884. We still have family land. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the house anymore, but we still have farm land, uh, or at least uh, at least have to be farm. I've lived here most of my life, uh, going to school in Oaksdale, Colfax for the first few years. Uh, I'm a 1987 graduate of Pullman High School. I went to college starting in Tacoma and finished in the Seattle area. I uh, received my degree in communications, and I've worked in various forms of media for 30 plus years. I'm uh, I, mostly in radio, both in front of and behind the microphone, although right now you might not be able to tell. Uh, I've dealt with budgets in the millions of dollars working as uh, the head of radio stations, as program director, music director, APD operations manager, uh, and I've worked with talent who asked for the moon, and I'm proud to say that they did not receive it. Uh, but they still did a wonderful job and they got well compensated. So I'm happy with that too. Uh, somehow I managed to make both those things work. So that's good. Uh, I'm a communicator through and through, which means I understand communication goes both ways. If you're speaking and not listening, then you're not actually communicating. And that's not a good thing. Um, basically, as Michael said, it's going to come up. Why am I running? I'm running because Whitman County is falling behind, frankly. And uh, people in Whitman County are struggling to afford a piece of life. There's people in this room, you know them, I know them, uh, they're having a hard time making ends meet. Uh, poverty is at all time high, and it's being, frankly, actively ignored at the county level, I feel. That's part of the reason I'm running. We're also behind on infrastructure. 
for years. We've been promised that the county will finally be in compliance with the state mandate to have GIS implemented. Still hasn't happened. We're four years past the 10 year window that was originally given by the Secretary of State. And we should not be the only county in the state that does not have this basic infrastructure. In my opinion, county leadership has failed. Whitman County is on cruise control. As much as I love Mike, he's a great guy. I think you're a wonderful guy. Uh, but frankly, I'd like to be the one to help guide us to turn the steering wheel away from oblivion and actually move towards the future. We need a better model. We need to be a model for other counties, a leader, a county government that others look up to and model themselves after. And frankly, I need your help to do it. That's why I'm asking for your vote for Whitman County Commission. Thank you. We'll now begin with questions. You will each have two minutes to answer each question. And I'm going to start with a question I wrote, which is <laughs> okay, I'm going to start with Michael. How would you describe the job of county commissioner? Much different than I thought it was when I first got elected. Uh, the first thing to really bear in mind when you become a county commissioner is to realize what the state constitution has to say about the job. So the way uh, Whitman County is constituted is a constitutional way of doing govern governance. There are options that the uh, voters vote for it, but in most of the counties remain with this option. Uh, it's a crazy way to do business because you have uh, separately elected uh, individuals who have authority, operational authority in their office, and I don't, but you get to set the budget for them. And so one of the important things to know when you first become a county commissioner is for you not to have grace. You have to have respect for, for your separately elected and you have to appreciate the job they're doing. But I can I generally sum up the job of county commissioner in one sentence. You allocate scarce resources. You will never have enough money to do the things you want to do, the things you think are important, and you are limited by state law in most of the new initiatives. Thank you, Mr. Mandy. <clears throat> I get asked that question a lot. Um, it, it seems odd that I would do it, but that is the number one question I get when I walk onto somebody's doorstep, knock on their door, start talking to them, walking down the street, what have you. And the way I look at it, and I hate to say this, this is an indictment of the job that the county government has been doing with commissioners specifically. If you don't know what they're doing, and they don't tell you what they're doing, and you don't know what's happening in county government, then how, how do you know they're doing their job, honestly? How do you know that? You don't. You wouldn't pay a plumber to come into your house, fix your sink, and have them come up and say, okay, I did it, and pay. No, show me what you do. Tell me what you do. That's one of the things I want to bring to county government, is make sure the transparency is there. Make sure you know every step of the way what is happening in the county, what's going on in the county, who's doing what. And I, I understand that sounds like a whole lot of letting people know what's going on, a whole lot of social media posts, a whole lot of speaking to the press. So be it. I'm not afraid of that. I am the press, or at least part of the press anyway. So yeah, I, I, I feel that things can be done better. And honestly, I, I feel that. I, I feel that the ball has been dropped, and that's another reason I'm running. And again, I want to be very clear. I respect Michael a lot. I respect Art a lot. I know Art is a brilliant man. He, he has all the answers, it seems like, or at least the answers you need when you ask him. And I know Sandy. I see Sandy Jameson over there. I speak volume. I, 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 I sing her praises. It was embarrassing in Oaksdale. Uh, we were at the Oaksdale Townwide County or Townwide uh, Yard Sale, and I was telling somebody what a great job she's doing and how how wonderful she's you know in the office of auditor. And uh, she walks up behind me, taps me on the shoulder. It it was it was quite shocking, but uh, you know what? I'm in every word, and uh, like I said, I do appreciate every, everything you've done. So I'm not trying to get down on that. I know. <laughs> Okay, since you both answered why you're running already, um, John Mark, what qualifies you to be a county commissioner? Education-wise, experience, et cetera? Well, as I said earlier, I, I have run radio stations up in 
groups of radio stations. Uh, I've dealt with million dollar budgets. I've dealt with people who are demanding millions of dollars to be part of that uh, entertainment conglomerate. Uh, and I've managed to make them work. Uh, it's it's a lot harder than you think. It's not all you know pressing play on CD. It's it's there's a lot of work behind the scenes. There's a lot of fiscal responsibility, and you have to be really responsible by well being irresponsible. Um, about being irresponsible. What I mean by that is when you're promoting a radio station, you have to be kind of wild, kind of crazy. Uh, obviously, county government is not the same as that, but it's the same idea. Things can get wild and crazy, as I'm sure my own heart would test. Things can get nuts in the county. And you have to be able to roll with the bunches. You also have to look forward. You can't look backwards. You can't concentrate on what's going on right at this moment. You have to consider what the future holds, what the future holds for the people of the county, the future residents of the county, uh, the children who are growing up in this county, the people who are growing older in this county and facing retirement. You have to keep all those people in mind. You have to keep the different social groups and the different economic groups, the farmers, the business people, the educators. You have to keep them all in mind. I'm able to do that. I'm able to multitask. I, I've done it many times before. If you can run a radio station, I'm pretty sure you can run a gun. So my goal is to think about it for running a radio station. I can say you probably will. <laughs> Thank you, John Martin. Michael, the same question. Yeah, I'm going to leave my mic on so I'll know which way the button goes. There we go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just real simply, in my four year degree at Warren State University in Finance and Accounting, we know what the fund of the county is. Uh, it's been pretty uh, helpful to me as a county commissioner. Uh, Fund accounting is much different than regular business accounting. It is the basis upon which uh, we do our accounting. Unless I get in trouble with Sandy, I'll stop there. Who knows it's far better than I do. Uh, I also was trained in leadership. I was a member of the Class 11 of the Washington Act Forestry Leadership Program, which is a two year leadership program. And we met once a month with uh, other country. Uh, public policy leaders. Uh, we did a national and international trips as part of that leadership. But most importantly, I've been a county commissioner for 16 years. I've done 16 budgets. Uh, I have been through 16 audits. Uh, I, my experience in Olympia as a legislative assistant was invaluable because all of a sudden I found myself president of the Washington State Association of Counties. And uh, while well, Art has served on our legislative steering committee, I previously served before him. I made a trip every two weeks over to Olympia to lobby our legislature uh, on issues important to the county. I also uh, would have been back to Washington, D.C., served as on the, on the board of the National Association of Counties. So I understand both state and federal and local county issues because I've lived here for 16 years. Okay. Now we get to some tough ones. <laughs> what will you do, Michael? Will be first up. What do you do? <laughs> what will you do to increase access to health care for the people living outside of Colfax? Well, let's first understand that Colfax is not all there is to health care. I mean, we have health care in Holman. I think we have two very good hospitals. The counties intersect with healthcare is public health, not foundational physical health. So what we do and what we are doing is that we actively refund our public health programs so that we can respond to the various challenges like we've had recently in the last couple of years, responding to COVID. And frankly, finding a lot of us, counties across the state, the state itself and the nation, found themselves fairly flat-footed with an unprecedented uh, unprecedented, uh, what was it called? Don't mark pandemic. pandemic. Thank you very much. Yeah, cosmic green bug. Right, cosmic green bug. I've had it twice. <laughs> but one of the things we did two years ago was lobby the legislature for increased funding to for foundation public health. And because we got that funding and we're a little bit past, you know, the pandemic. Uh, we can start getting back on our feet again. And one of the things we're going to plan on doing is probably expanding staffing and public health so that we can do some of the things we did before the state cut our public health funding. The county contributes to foundational public health, but the vast majority of that money comes from the state. 
And the way to get that money from the state is to act collectively with your other counties across the state to, to emphasize the importance of public health money. But we don't do doctoring. We don't do nursing. That's not our county function. John Martin. Could you repeat the question? Uh, what will you do to increase access to public to health care for people living out of the county, out of coal bags better? Well, yeah, of course you want to focus on the county as a whole. That that's kind of the definition of the job. Um, Michael pretty much covered it. He, he went through uh, all the stuff that is already happening. As far as future, looking towards the future, there are other things we can do uh, that not only affect health, but uh, other concerns as far as uh, housing security and uh, security as far as food. Um, county is not in the business of doing any of those things. But what county is, it's a stakeholder. I mean, as a stakeholder, the county has a responsibility to help the various agencies, uh, such as Community Action Center or uh, United Way, various places that do provide those services, work together with them using county resources and information and data to share with them and figure out where their best focus, where they can do the most good. So for example, if you have United Way focusing on, uh, let's say uh, housing security, and you also have Community Action Center and focusing on housing security and also food security. Nobody's focusing on health and welfare, health and safety. No problem. All we have to do is work with them and figure out where we can repurpose some of those dollars, some of that effort, who does what, and aim them in the right direction. Even that all out so it's not over covering one, one issue or under covering another, and making sure that we lift these people up once they get up. Once they are able to support themselves, I mean, that's all they need is a little lift. We're talking about working families here. We're talking about families to go out and work a couple jobs, have trouble with uh, affording child care. We're talking about families that are struggling in Whitman County. Once we lift them up and give them an opportunity to move into a higher tax bracket and uh, help share with the rest of the county, we all do better. Okay, a uh, related question. What programs, and uh, this will be you, John Mark, what programs are you proposing to deal with poverty and how will you fund it? Well, I, I think I just pretty much covered that. Uh, yeah. As far as uh, making sure that all those different um, for profits, non profits, uh, funds, very, various uh, groups that work with people in poverty that work with those issues of housing and uh, food security and health. And I, I mean, recently I had a teacher at home came up to me and she asked me, what can you as a Whitman County Commissioner, if you're in office, what can you do to help education? And he prefaced this with, I've asked the, the county commissioners before, several county commissioners, and they all say, we have nothing to do with the education in home. We, we, we don't deal with it directly, no, but there's other things you can do. And every one of those things, food security, housing security, health, every one of those things that county commissioners do have an effect on is going to affect children in school. Because if you go to school and you're hungry, you don't know where you're going home to after school, you're in trouble. You're not going to learn. You're not going to learn. You're just not. You're going to struggle just like your parents are struggling. You're going to come home and wonder, you know, mom's, mom's off working. She can't make dinner. Well, maybe the school lunch was the only food you got that day. It happens. It's out there, and it's being ignored. And that's one of the things I want to address, and that's exactly how I want to address it. Michael? Well, Mankey is correct. Uh, some counties in other states, the school districts are under the counties. That is not the case uh, here in Whitman County, nor is, is it the case anywhere in the state. We have a system for education that the uh, Secretary of Education oversees, and we have local school board members uh, that we elect as part of this community from the various jurisdictions to oversee the funding they get. It is not within our guardrails to specifically do education. John Mark mentioned corollary programs. I assume you're talking about some of the community development block grants that is a pass through for the county that both the to say the community action center. 
It should be recognized. And we're a small county. The only way we're going to make any success in this county on any of these issues is number one, partner with other organizations that do specialize in this, these issues. We don't give do homelessness, but we have homelessness dollars. Who does homelessness? Community Action Center. Who feeds, you know, the um, who's the food bank? Where do people get food when they don't have when they don't have food? They go to the local food bank. Dollars that uh, Whitman County has contributed to with our uh, ARPA money, which is the federal dollars that came from COVID. So we have certain guidelines, you know, certain guardrails around what we do. We have not been authorized by the state to tax or spend on welfare. We have been authorized to do public health, which helps kids and families in need. We have a WIC program in the county where we help young mothers trying to feed their babies um, to provide food vouchers for them. And also we, we just began participating and partnership with the Peace and Lutheran Church here in Colfax and suggest, you know what we need here? We could use some child care. And I can't think of a better economic driver than allowing uh, two income families the opportunity. Because oftentimes it's gonna take two jobs in order to, to feed and grow a family here. So uh, we recently, just last week, uh, awarded uh, the local child care center some ARPA dollars to begin their project. It's gonna take a whole community to do it. We don't have the resources to solve poverty. We don't have the resources to solve all the, I mean, housing issues, but we do have the resources together to, to make meaningful progress on it. And we do that with partners. Thank you. Can, can I clarify real quick? You did ask, it's okay. Okay, we got time. Uh, I, was, I was speaking specifically of partnering as a forming a commission to work with these nonprofits and for profits and such, not actually giving tax dollars directly to them, but actually giving them direction using county resources, information, and statistics. Okay. Michael, we're going to switch gears here. Yes, ma'am. How can our landscape planning, land use planning, wow. <laughs> I need new glasses. Accommodate population growth without taking away from without taking more farm around farmland, farm ground out of production. Okay. Do you want me to reread that? Okay. okay. So um, recently, uh, within the last year. Uh, Whitman County has gone through the comprehensive planning process where the community was invited to talk about what is your vision for Whitman County. Uh, as, we, as we do zoning ordinances, what's the overarching uh, philosophy that Whitman County has? And folks, it's about balance, because if you're gonna grow, you're gonna grow land, you're, you're, you're gonna need land to put houses on. So Whitman County, uh, the last planning process in this current one, continues to see and want to protect the rural nature of Whitman County. Uh, and so we have a comprehensive plan vetted with the public over a long period of time with the planning commission where we define what we thought that balance was. Now we have limitations on housing that can put in certain rural areas on zoning. There is some talk about maybe like, like loosening that up just to the planning commission is actually talking about that now. But I think if you want to know what the county vision is for land use planning, I highly recommend you take a look at our comprehensive plan. And while you're at it, take a look at our critical areas ordinance where we have prioritized saving natural resources, aquifer recharge, streams, and uh, the, the types of things that make this community pretty and valuable. Yeah, Mark. I, I will ask you to read it. Okay. How can our land use planning? Accommodate population growth without taking more farm ground out of production. Well, the last thing I would want to do is take farm ground out of production, believe me. Um, well, it, it is a great question. Uh, what we can do, of course, we want to preserve the land that we have, preserve the natural resources we have for future generations. Everybody, you know, in this room 
should be looking forward and thinking forward about future generations and about your future, frankly. Uh, we, we need to keep on top of that. I, I support our local conservation districts and uh, the big Phoenix Conservancy uh, working to make sure that the lands that uh, are in danger or uh, have been somewhat contaminated or, or somewhat are in decline are taken care of, are managed properly, and no longer are in decline. Maybe they're actually bouncing back. Uh, looking at the uh, housing, uh, as far as zoning laws, uh, looking at the single family zoning laws specifically is one way that we can make a big difference. There are a lot of communities out there that have taken a complete revamp of their single family zoning laws and made a huge difference in affordable housing. Uh, the uh, median for most developers to make the most bang for the buck is about $650,000 per house, so two-thirds of a million. Uh, most people don't have that kind of money when they're starting out, and it's really hard to get a loan for that much when you're starting out. Uh, most people starting out don't have a family, maybe they have one child. They, they really need a one- or two-bedroom apartment. Well, there's no reason that we can't have developers start building houses that are in that range, between 1,000 and 1,500 square feet. If we do revamp the single family zoning laws and start building houses like that, yes, developers will not make as much money, but people will be able to afford houses and have equity in their house instead of throwing away money on rent. Not that I have a problem with renting. It's a great idea to start out, but eventually, especially when you're starting out as a new family, we want to make sure that you are building equity in something that you own and or eventually will own. That's that's one way to look forward to or look at it. Uh, the uh, what is it? The Blues Regional Housing Assessment Guide. That is another thing that I look to uh, as far as guidance. There's a lot of great information in there. Um, I would highly suggest you look it over. Um, I, I go into it, but it is quite a long guide. So it, it, that that is just one example that we could do moving forward. Okay, John Mark, I'm going to ask you a related question to uh, population growth and land use, and that's water. We have a finite amount. What should we do? Stop using it. No, just. Uh, water is a big issue because it seems like the aquifer is in constant decline. Now, I was at a PBAC meeting recently, and I was surprised to find out that Poland and Moscow are in a similar, uh, separate aquifer from Colfax, believe it or not. I did not know that. I was surprised to find that out. Um, what, what we have found is in Moscow, there is one pump station that they stop using, and it is slowly recharging. So that is a good sign. But as far as figuring out what we're going to do in the future, there are a lot of actions we can take. Uh, as far as zero escaping uh, at homes, in family homes, that can help. Uh, if you need it for irrigation, for food growth, obviously that's an important thing. If you need it for your own consumption, obviously, or you know, livestock consumption. That's also an important, very important thing. But you have to remember that that aquifer, if it's going, we have to protect it because that aquifer doesn't just serve the cities. That aquifer is, if you're in a farmer, it's in your backyard. You're pumping out of that same aquifer, the Grand Run. And we all need to take a hand in making sure that it is protected. And if, if it gets much worse, we definitely need to do something to find a way to reduce the use that it is equitable for everybody involved, both citizen, farm, business, everybody needs a hand in this. And this is something that obviously we're going to have to do because if we don't do it, we're gonna end up in a world of hurt. Well, so of your years ago, I served on the police base in committee, and that is a very unique, uh, as a board member, uh, or as a board member now, when he came on, uh, largely because of his science degree and his computer-like memory. But there's basically two options with the, with the aquifer. That the aquifer is declining, there is no question. That if we maintain the status quo, we will have to dig deeper wells to the extent we may run out of water. Two things, conservation and alternative water uses, sources. Uh, PBAC has proposed actually four alternatives, 
We're trying to bring new water resources into the Blue Space Mountain for, uh, various piping ideas. But if we're going to stop permanently the decline of the aquifer, we have to look at alternate water resources that will cost a lot, a lot of money. Uh, one of those alternate ideas is something called aquifer recharge, because where you take water during the high flow season and you charge it into the aquifer for storage through the year. Conservation and recharge are the two things you can do. If you don't do uh, those two things, you're going to have a problem with your aquifer and your ranch will go up. Thank you. Uh, as you know, Whitman County farmers have been affected by unpredictable weather and and extremes like severe drought and heat spikes. What would you do to slow climate change and assist farmers in our area? And I'm gonna start with Michael. What would I do to slow <laughs> climate change? Uh, well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, my father said something that's kind of something I've thought all during this campaign. Uh, when it first started, even before it started, he, he pulled it to me one time. Uh, it's better to light a single candle than to curse the gardens. And climate change, I believe, to be a real issue. Some don't. And I think it's going to have real impacts. But if I wanted to, to truly affect climate change, I would run the state legislature or Congress. Because what we can do here in Whitman County, and I'm a farmer. You know, uh, Inslee's proposal that we electrify uh, trucks. I drove an 18 motor this summer during harvest that we electrify it. That's going to be a tough sell if we don't have the generation capacity. I find a way to increase electric generation because I think if you're going to reduce carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide emissions, it's going to be something like electricity or hydrogen. But we don't have those resources here in the county to start hydrogen charging stations or convert all the vehicles we have here, particularly the farm vehicles to electricity. John Mark? One thing that may surprise everybody here is that Michael and I do agree on occasion on a lot of things. And uh, this is one of them. It's really hard at the county level to do anything that is really effective as far as solving climate change. It does exist. I, I also agree, and I know that uh, that that uh, saying by your father is not only poignant; it, it is very applicable here. Um, as far as electrifying things, you know, I, I think that's a great idea. I, I've driven electric cars, uh, Teslas. I, I've spoken to people that own Rivian pickup trucks. Uh, they seem to be pretty happy with them, you know. And and these are people that travel across the state fairly often, if not across the nation. Um, I, I don't, you know, get that into their personal life, but I can tell you that the technology is, if it's not there, we're on the cusp of being able to do that with a lot of farm equipment. Now, one thing I would demand at the county level, and I'm pretty sure we can do this, or at least petition the state, uh, is to give farmers the same kind of breaks that they get uh, with any sort of uh, vehicle that they use in farm use, any of their uh, tractors, any of their trucks, any of the combines, what have you, that are run on diesel. You can run it on red dye diesel. Everything's familiar with that if you're a farmer. We should have the same kind of brakes on electricity for charging those vehicles. If we are charging those vehicles, you need to get those brakes. You need to make sure that it is on par, if not less, I would hope less than considering the price of diesel right now, Yes, I spit those words out because I'm not too happy about the price. So I'm not sure you aren't either. But I want to make sure that uh, I will make sure that you will get those kind of breaks. So if we do go with electrification, which is a great first step, then you will not have to incur the cost uh, beyond what you would normally incur if you were purchasing a new vehicle and running it. Thank you. Um... John Mark, this is, we'll start with you. If elected, is there a way the county can help fund the sheriff's department to fight the runaway problem of crime and thefts in the county? There are a lot of difficulties there. Uh, funding the sheriff's department, of course, we're critical and non-critical entities in the county that need to be funded. The sheriff's department is pretty much right there, not the list critical. 
Um, I know Brett has his hands tied right now. He's told me many times I've talked to him. I went to school with the guy who was my neighbor for a long time. And he is doing the best he can with what he has. As far as fighting crime, you know, the only way you can do that is by either bringing on more people to the force or by going and finding the source of the crime, what drives that crime. And I think a lot of that crime is driven by poverty. And I think by addressing that poverty, that would be a good first step. Do we need more deputies? Possibly. I, I, if you ask Brett, I'm sure the perfect amount of deputies on his police force are always N plus one, where N is the number of deputies he has right now. Uh, I feel the same way about motorcycles. But the thing is, you know, we can afford what we can afford, and we can allocate the funds as best we can. Fighting the poverty, I think, would be a good first step, and it would be a lot easier than trying to tax its overworked department with more, more patrols and uh, more, more possibly hazardous duties. So I, I think the first good step would be fighting poverty and making sure that the reason to go out and uh, commit a crime, or at least part of the reason, is removed. I Law and justice, public safety is 70% of our budget. That tends to be average across the state. So that, that includes the courts, the superior, and the juvenile, and the district court. All that's entailed in that, including public defense, which we can talk about later, that's about 70% of anybody's budget across the state. So frankly, when you have, when you look at your budget, you look really hard at the sheriff. One of the things you will find over the time since uh, I've been a commissioner, and particularly since uh, our Tom came on, that relationship between electeds has dramatically improved, and our capacity to weigh the difficult balances across all the county needs uh, has improved. But I'll tell you what, public safety is probably the county's number one priority. Well, he won't get everything he needs, and he's been, he, he tried to pull fast one or two occasionally, but by and large, Brett, who's a friend of mine, spends wisely and turns money back. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do about uh, the sheriff's department. We're going to continue to fund it. We're going to continue to fund the deputies we have, which are second to none. Okay. Uh, Michael, considering 70% of the budget is public safety, what would you do infrastructure wise with the rest of the money? Uh, 30%. That doesn't work that way. <laughs> At all. At all. No. So you know, you what can... is your priority for um, infrastructure in the county? Well, we've actually exercised some of our infrastructure. Uh, um, uh, as far as GIS is concerned, we had to save a lot of money to get there. Huge expense. We're about ready to roll that out. It's being used in our uh, assessment department right now. It will happen and it's done. We just accomplished in the courthouse something we call the McKinstry Project where we did a lot of updates to the main courthouse building to bring it in compliance with the American Disabilities Act. Another portion of infrastructure that we have that is probably the most noticeable is our roads and bridges. And since I've been commissioner and, and since uh, uh, Mr. Story has been our public works director, our rating with, with the County Road Administration Board on the quality of our roads and bridges has all improved. You know, infrastructure, does, is not very flashy. But when the roof leaks, uh, it's hard to do work. So we have to balance infrastructure with operating expenses. And we have a capital improvement program we go through every year. Uh, we fund certain, certain programs through a vetted process. So I'm, at, I'm actually pretty proud of what we've done with our infrastructure with our limited dollars. John Mark? Well, the public funds the private, believe it or not, in a lot of ways, uh, whether it's education, whether it's fire and police emergency services, whether it is, well, GIS, frankly, uh, all of this infrastructure is very important. If I was going to focus on one thing, I would have to say without a doubt, continuing with GIS. Now, we may have GIS ready to roll out, but frankly, I don't believe that. No offense, Michael, but four years ago, you sat next to me and you said to everybody on the record that 
we have the money for GIS. And here it is four years later, we still don't have it. Four years ago was the end of the 10 year mandated period to get GIS operation. At this point, Whitman County is the only county in the state that doesn't have GIS. It is not implemented. I see you shaking your head, Art. It's true. You know it's true. In fact, I was talking with the, uh, the city administrator, Mike Urban, in Bowman. And as far as his team's been able to confirm, we're the only county west of the Mississippi that doesn't have GIS. In it. I am met with dumbed down the stairs by every, everybody that I talk to that's in any sort of government when I say that Whitman County doesn't have GIS. They can't believe it. They can't understand a basic piece of, of infrastructure, why we don't have it, how we can maintain a county government without it. Well, recently, I was watching a, uh, a one, of, one of the uh, commissioners meetings, and you guys were discussing who owned the guardrail and who owned uh, what parts of the Pandora Bridge over the highway going to Spokane, just on Central Arizona. And fortunately, Art had that information. Without GIS, though, so if Art were to retire or you know move on to another position, who would have that information? Well, fortunately, we saved in GIS. What if you want to look at what's happening with uh, invasive weeds, you know, a lot of farmers worried about invasive weeds, sure. Well, we can look at how it was 10 years ago by going back and looking at the GIS 10 years ago. Unfortunately, we don't have that GIS, but we will. And that is definitely one of my priorities, is making sure that that is implemented and implemented well. Okay, John Mark, could you explain to everyone what GIS is and what it will do for the county? GIS, the easiest way to explain it is, you would think it's a map, it sounds like GPS. Uh, GIS is graphical information system. It's a way of plotting everything on a map. Each map is called a layer. The reason they're called layers is because you can stack them on top of each other and you can look at them one by one and you can determine different things. You can look at, as I said, with those uh, invasive weeds, you can look at the map from 10 years ago, overlay the map from five years ago and see where they're going. You can tell what's changed. Uh, Poland has gone as far as actually labeling all the trees in town, how old they are, what type they are, everything. You can put anything on these maps. You can put any sort of boundary, any sort of utility. Uh, you can, I mean, the, the, <laughs> the options are limitless, really. Uh, the biggest problem with GIS is getting it installed. Once you get GIS in the government or in, in the computer system, you're pretty much set. Now, it's just like installing a word processor, for example, on your computer. You install a word processor, you're not going to have a full dictionary. Well, actually, you might nowadays. You're not going to have a, a full sort of, uh, 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 let's say, a master's thesis on there until you write it, until you populate that. So GIS as a system, that's the easy part, getting that installed. As far as adding layers, that's the difficult part. That's a part we can we can draw those layers from Pullman, we can draw those layers from you know bound, boundary counties from uh, Whitman County, Lake Todd, Adams, and uh, take what they have as overlap and use that as a start. From there, we can build our own GIS. And some people have likened it to a library. Okay, well, GIS is a library. We have a bunch of shelves. Now we need to take those maps, those layers, which are books, and populate the shelves so everybody can come in and look. I have a lot more to say on GIS, but I have limited time. So I will just say that is one of the things that larger companies look at when they're thinking about relocating to a county like Whitman. And if we don't have it, they're going to start asking questions about what other amenities we don't have, what other basic stuff, and what, what other basic stuff we're missing, what other, other basic uh, infrastructure we're missing. And they're likely to pass this over. Michael, do you have anything to add? Yeah, we do have GIS implemented both in public works with the road system. In case our gets hit by a bus, God forbid, we'll know who owns the, road, uh, the uh, guardrails. We have GIS implemented in elections. We have GIS implemented in the assessor system. What we don't have is a public interface yet, and I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Whitney County offers very little for the veterans. What do you intend to initiate or to support or support veterans' activities? Uh, Michael, sorry. 
Well, how about hiring a veteran services office, which we have just done? You know, using some outside funding, like the Art Sloan, I think we're kind of being the lead on that. But we have recently hired a veteran services officer named Cody Year. If you have questions about your veterans' benefits, if you have questions about your retirement, if you have questions about the VA, we have a guy. Come see him. John Hart. The only thing I can add is thank you, Art, for interviewing all those people because I know you did because you interviewed one of my friends back for the position. Uh, before he was here, the best you can do is either go to Spokane or come all the way down to Lewiston. And if you cross the border into Lewiston, then things got even more dicey. So it was a very difficult struggle for uh, veterans in Whitman County. I'm glad a lot of that has been straightened out. Now it'd be nice if we could actually get a VA office, a real VA office to offer services down here. I realize that's a federal thing, but that's something that certainly be built in the body. Okay, do we have any more questions? I've got just one left here. Okay, this says, John, what can you do that Mike has not already done? <laughs> Rochelle, I can look forward to the future. I can actually look forward to doing things and think about what's coming in the future. Michael, I'm not I'm seriously, that's my main face. No, well, anyway, whoever whoever did it did submit that question. It is a fantastic question, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate that it was pointed at me. But to be honest, Michael has done a fantastic job in 16 years. Uh, he has stated many times, publicly, privately, and to, to my friends, to me, to my wife, that he has a desire to retire. And I support that desire. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great guy. He is. He is. Uh, but really, I, I would love you to, you know, not, not so much, it's not so much that I want to take your job, dude. It's, it's the fact that I appreciate what you did and I'm going to continue in the same vein. I want to make sure Whitman County is taken care of for the future. I'm not here to make radical changes. I'm not here to you know paint the town in rainbow colors and, and stamp big blue D's down Main Street. That's not me. And anybody who knows me knows that's not me. What I'm here to do is make sure Whitman County's future is secure. And the best way I can do that is by being elected to a big kind of commission in this country. And I would love to have your support. By the way, Michael, I don't know if I told you this, I think I did, but before you announced your candidacy 42 minutes before the end of filing, uh, I actually considered asking if you would support me. If you were, no, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Because okay. this guy's a great guy. This, this guy's a great guy. It was and, a little unfair to John Park as well. I'll have to admit that. I mean, we're talking here a little bit, but. You know, he didn't expect me to run. So he didn't expect me to run. And uh, he filed with the expectation I wasn't going to run. That's tough duty. Yeah, I knew I was going to run against somebody. And the life of me, I think it was going to be Michael. <laughs> I'm, I'm not against him. I'm not against him, obviously. But wow. uh, he is a fantastic guy. So uh, thank you, Michael, for your service. Okay, Michael, I'm going to paraphrase this somehow. Uh, what can you do that John cannot do? <laughs> oh, I, I think we've, we've talked about this a lot. Uh, I, I have an education and an experience background that I think uniquely match, matches the office I'm seeking. Um, it's not for everybody. You know, I may lose. That'll be fine. It's not the most important thing in the world, but uh, I'm willing to do it again. Okay. More questions? Are there any chat questions? None, but we have a couple of last questions. Well, while we're waiting, since this question has not been submitted, but I'll ask it anyway, the dreaded biting pad. Michael, the Albion, Coleman, Albion, Colfax. The cold cap trail. The cap trail, excuse me. Colfax, Albion, Coleman trail. Okay, well, going the other way. Yeah. Yeah, lovely area. As far as the county's perspective is concerned, I don't envision that we would ever have the resources to make a significant investment in that unless something dramatically changes. So from a county commissioner perspective, uh, I would support funding for it right now when we're you know, a million short in our budget. 
I mean, that's just not my number one priority. And it's lovely. I love, you know, the Chipman Trail. I was around when they put that, that trail together. It's a great asset. But the infrastructure and the dollars necessary to complete that project, particularly the bridges that are out, and I was fighting that fire when that bridge was burned as a volunteer fireman. I actually think is we can't overcome it as a county. Denmark? Well, as a rule, I do support uh, rail to trail programs and I also support uh, rail banking. Um, the county does not have the funds to invest in that trail. Michael is absolutely right. Uh, as far as support, uh, lobbying to, to get some funds, be it from the state or uh, just signing a document, I, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, my wife and I do enjoy the Chipman Trail and uh, the Blue Cascades Trail. It's a fantastic, I mean, I don't know if you've been to it. Michael and I were actually at the opening of Trust Contigo. And I don't know if you've been there recently, but it's been a huge boon to businesses to keep going. Uh, my wife and I went up there to a have a lunch one day, and a group of 11 bikers came walking into the cafe, and they were just talking about how great the trail is. So I do support the trail systems. I, I do have concerns. I know the landowners that live next to those trails are, are very concerned about who might be using the trails. Um, I, I think you might be a little, I don't know, biased by who might they be using the trails. It's, it's not drug runners, it's usually people who are literally running for help. Uh, people who, I, I, I've never seen anybody go out there with the uh, plan to do anything untoward, let's just say that. Uh, but I do understand your concern and I'm, I'm more than willing to work with you if you live on a trail or a proposed trail and you have concerns. As I said, I'm a communicator, communication goes both ways. I, I can talk to you, but if I'm not listening to you, then we're not communicating. That's not serving any of our interests. Okay, we have some more questions. We have some more questions. How do we balance the needs and services of Whitman County with those of Pullman? First, yeah. oh, um, question. Denmark. Denmark. Oh, okay. Well, that seems to be the question, doesn't it? Uh, a lot of people look at me and say, "You live in Pullman. You're gonna you're gonna represent Pullman. You don't care about the county," which is a complete lie. That's that's not true at all. My family, as I said, we've been here for five generations. I care about the county. Chances are, most of the people in this room, if we run into each other, nine times out of ten, it was in some small town out in the county. It wasn't in the county. So I, I understand the rural lifestyle. I understand maybe maybe not as well as farmers do, but I understand the concerns that farmers have, and I am more than willing to listen to them and give the full weight of their concerns to my decisions. As as far as uh, being a Pullman resident, Pullman tends to be more or less self-sufficient when it comes to county. Uh, they're they're not completely obviously, but. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. It just seems like the county should be managing the county and Pullman should be managing the Pullman. There will be some overlap. There used to be meetings that were joint meetings between the county commissioners and the city of Pullman, which were a wonderful thing, in my opinion, uh, for two reasons. Number one, it gave a chance for that overlap to happen for people to bring their concerns from the city to the county and from the county to the city uh, if, if that was ever a concern. I don't think there were that many concerns about, you know, the city taking anything from the county, except for maybe funding. Um, but it, it was a wonderful thing for two reasons. Number one, that happened. Number two, it usually happened in the evening when more people were able to attend the commission's meeting. More people were able to show up to be saying, nine o'clock on Monday, most of us are we're, we're busy, we're doing things. We don't have time to show up unless it's our job. And even then, who knows? Uh, that was, that was kind of the day, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, uh, dude, you you were sick. It's okay. Oops. But no, uh, it's 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 a good thing. And, and changing the time of the meeting, maybe once a month to an evening meeting, I think that might even be something worth exploring. Would that have anything to do with Pullman and County? No. But I think for the constituents of the county, being able to access the uh, government functions of the county commissioners and the county commissioners' meetings, that would be a good thing. Michael. 
Well, I think most people recognize that the city of Pullman and its boundaries is where the county commissioner's authority ends. So we're the government between the towns. Uh, city government is very, very different from county government. We don't have a mayor, we don't have a you know a council. Uh, we do elections. We do things that uh, cities don't do, and so we have different challenges. But I would like to just point to one uh, example of city county cooperation, and, and that was our tax sharing agreement that was implemented huge five years ago. Uh, wherein instead of fighting over the Pullman Mosco corridor, we decided to share it. And that was unique across the state because we have a good working relationship with the city of Pullman and their council. We were able to do something very, very unique. We're going to put you know, certain funds aside for infrastructure development on the Mosco Pullman Highway uh, that the city of Pullman may, in fact, annex at a certain, at certain point of time. But we're not going to fight over whose jurisdiction it is. We're going to share it because it's a common good for, for the entire county and region, frankly, because we also belong to the Palouse region, which includes Laytown County, and hence we work with Laytown County as well. Okay. Yeah. This, uh, Michael, are you prepared to put in the time and energy needed to do this job? Yes. <laughs> Mark. I. Absolutely, of course. I've I've uh, seen what Michael does, and I'm sure I can handle all that. Okay. If we have no more questions, no more questions. Okay. Let's move on to closing remarks, and we will start with Michael. You have three minutes. Three minutes for closing remarks. I'm not going to take three minutes. Again, I appreciate. Don Mark sit and we joke with each other. It's fun. I get a, you know, he hugs my wife and I let him. And uh, I get to hug his wife occasionally because, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is not an easy thing to do. Uh, this is particularly not good timing for me given three surgeries I've had this summer to rehab. I can't even count it aside. Uh, and John has been, John Mark, not John, has been a gentleman through the whole time. Uh, who wins this race is kind of up to you. I'm, I, I'm not going to pretend to know that I, I have any idea who's going to win the race. But if elected, and I would like your vote, I'm going to continue doing some of the things I have been, been doing for the past 16 years. And frankly, I'm proud to have the endorsement of the Washington State Farm Bureau, the state association, who endorsed me in this race, as well as the Whitman County uh, Realtors Association. Uh, those are two groups that I do not solicit endorsements from and got. Uh, but I'll tell you what, uh, it's not an easy job. Uh, there are some weird pressures and some weird schedules you keep. Being president of the state association was quite a ride, but one I would trade for the world because I got to go to almost every county in this state. I got to meet with every congressperson in this state. I got to lobby the legislature over and over and over again, and I got to testify in front of Congress. And so those are things that I'm proud of, and I hope I can continue to do. If uh, you know, if John happens to win, I'll be one of the guys that helps train him over in Olympia in December, and would probably do so. Because that was one of my jobs now as a tenured commissioner, is I train new commissioners. And the people who elected me to president was a bunch of Democrats. Most of the county commissioners and council members are Democrats. We don't care what party you're from. All we care about is do you care about your community? Do you care about the responsibilities assigned to you? So I still care very much. Thank you. Well, as far as closing statements, again, I, I want to say Michael is a great guy and uh, he left out the part where we actually hug each other. Uh, oh, yeah, we do. It's, it's not. No, but it's it, it's a it's a contentious but good relationship. It's it's not we're we're not in each other's throats. Um, you know, some some people here may be looking at me like, yeah, we are, but we're not. We're not looking. We all live here. 
We all live in the same county. We all want the same thing to happen. We want it to succeed. We want to succeed. We want the best for the residents of the county. We want to make sure that we are taken care of and we take care of our own, as well as anybody else who might move here or you know any, anybody else who, who may have to come here for any reason. We want to make sure that they are welcome and they are taken care of. And Michael has been more than welcoming the two times that I've run against you. He, he has been a wonderful guy, and I very much appreciate everything that he's done, uh, whether it's advice, uh, whether whether it's uh, driving driving signs into my friend's yard, which uh, yeah, you did that. <laughs> it's it, it's 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 uh, anyway, yeah, it's it's a it's a good thing. And if I win, I, I would like to say when I win, not out of ego, but out of positivity, uh, I will represent you all equally, no matter what letter you may have behind your name. Voting for somebody because of the letter behind your name is a ridiculous idea. If you're doing that, you're voting for the wrong reason, and you should you should vote for the right person for the job. Whether you think that's me or you think it's Michael, as long as you vote your conscience, as, as long as you vote for the one you think is best, I'm going to be perfectly happy with your decision. And I, once again, I want to thank the League of Women Voters. I want to thank Michael, this fantastic guy, Audrey, and your father, who I just found out is in the audience. That's hi, how are you doing? Yeah. Uh, Art, and unfortunately, Tom's not here, I think. That's too bad. But uh, everybody else who turned out tonight, Thank you for coming out. Thank you for your questions. And, uh, you know, I, I appreciate even the difficult ones. I really do, because that gives me a chance to learn as well. I, I may I may not have the experience he has, but I certainly have the drive he had when we started. So thank you. Okay, I would like to thank everybody who attended in person and over Zoom, especially the candidates, Michael Larger and John Mark Mandy. Uh, to reiterate, the form has been recorded. It is, will be available through our website, lwvpullman.org. That will send you to the YouTube channel where you can watch it again if you really want to do that. So it's painful. But before we adjourn, I just want to remind everyone, there's still time to register. If you haven't done so or know somebody who hasn't done so, get after them. The deadline to register by mail or online is October 31st. You can register up in the elections office up to and including election day. So please register. There will be three televised candidate forums coming up in the next few days. Tomorrow is all on KSPX. Tomorrow will be the Congressional District with Captain Morris Rogers and Natasha Hill from 7 to 8 on Channel 7 or KSPX, Spokane Public TV Station. On Sunday at 5 o'clock, it will be the Senate race, Patty, Patty Murray and Tiffany Smiley. And in the afternoon at 3.30 on tape, but this will be a tape delay, it will be the Secretary of State race. So. Check them out, check out the candidates, see what you want to do. Ballots will be mailed Friday, or they'll start to be mailed Friday. And if you don't get them by Wednesday, Thursday, call the elections office. So please vote. Your vote counts. Her, call her. <laughs> Thank you all.